Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 32 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crochet podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm recording from New Hampshire. And I'm coming at you here from Scotland. Hello. Hello, everybody. Back to audio. Yep. Right where we're comfortable. Yep. Don't have to wear makeup. Don't have to worry about any of that sort of thing. <laughs> Don't have to worry about the really poor lighting because now it's becoming autumn in Scotland and we no longer get the long, long days of sunlight. Oh. Wait, it's already started? Yeah. It's like 830 and it's, I mean, it's not, it's not pitch dark, but it's pretty dark. Hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, uh. I the staying light until 11 p.m. business. Oh. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We didn't see any of that when we were in Scotland. I guess we weren't there early enough in the summer. Hmm. Yeah. So do we have some special thank yous today? Yes, we do. Candy, who is Crazy Animal Zoo 257 in, in Ravelry, said hello. And also Christine, who's Christine Mini. She said hello on our Ravelry thread, and she also left us a really nice iTunes review. So thank you, Christine. Yeah, it was really nice. Yep. So, um, did we decide on a BuzzFeed quiz? Um, yes. So, I like the one that you pulled out, which was, which Harry Potter and Marvel characters are you a perfect combo of? <laughs> and, like, when I got mine, I I made a funny noise. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? Do you want to know what I got? What would you get? I got Dobby and Groot. <laughs> <laughs> and just see their two pictures together. It's just like, uh, they're just these brown, wrinkly things. Oh, that's so So it funny. says, you're a combo of Dobby and Groot. Like Dobby, you're not afraid to stand up for the little guy. And like Groot, you're rambunctious and love to have a good time. You're fierce, fun, and imaginative. <laughs> mm, that's funny. I got Hermione Granger and Black Widow. You're a combo of Hermione Granger and Black Widow. Like Hermione, you're a planner who likes to take control of any situation. And like Black Widow, you never back down from a challenge. You're cutting, intuitive, and ambitious. Mm. I don't know about the ambitious <laughs> part. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, well. why are you Groot in um? Because I'm not afraid to stand up for the little guy, but I'm also rambunctious and love to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> which which uh, Marvel character would you... Uh, Wanted to be handcuffed to. Okay, I feel like it wasn't it wasn't a lot of great options. Uh huh. But I went with Shuri. Oh, I picked Rocket. Black Panther. <laughs> I feel like Rocket is just this angry little thing, and you wouldn't actually want to be handcuffed to him. <laughs> Whereas Shuri was the only person who seemed like you could have like just a fun time. Oh, with. I just thought because Rocket make, always makes me laugh. <laughs> and who 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 did you pick to go to the U ball with? So you can tell this quiz was written pretty recently because yeah. two of the characters are have been you know uh-huh. newly created. So I went with Nick Young from Crazy Rich Asians, even though I'm not seeing Crazy Rich Asians yet. Uh, we did, we saw that. <laughs> and uh, what about wait? What? Who did you? Who did you pick to Nick Young attend the Yule Ball with? You, you yeah. also went with him. Mm. <laughs> and what about the? How would your friends describe you? So the options were brave, ambitious, goofy, hardworking, loyal, or passionate. And I went for, what do you think I went for? Loyal? I went with goofy. Oh, so did I. But I feel like that's more, <laughs> maybe maybe my friends wouldn't actually describe me as goofy. Maybe it would be more like family would describe me as uh-huh. goofy. Like, I don't know that my goofy side shows quite as much mm. <laughs> when I'm not with my 16-year-old sister. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we manage to well I guess that's only two things that we picked that were the same yeah well <laughs> I think I think we got good combos yeah that's... even though mine's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I found a quiz that actually matches up Harry Potter and Marvel characters I mean, <laughs> I mean the amount of BuzzFeed quizzes there are out there <laughs> yeah I guess I, it still surprised me to, to find that right do you have any whips to talk about? I do. I have one whip, and it's where is it? It's right here. You're looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I just I started a new sweater, and it was a, one of the sweaters that 
I think I talked about. You talked about it in another episode that you wanted to yes. get. Yes, it's the Engie sweater by Jennifer Steinglass. And I'm using yarn that I got in Edinburgh, the Martin's Lab. Pink, pink, pink. Yeah, the, the sport weight pink. And so the Engie has that sort of, is it a, is it a fair isle or the yoke? I guess it's more Icelandic, Icelandic because it's a round yoke. And I, I even did a swatch, yeah. you know, a color work swatch. Mm-hmm. And so this is, I've never done a sweater where you cast on, a, a provisional cast on, and it's like 300 stitches, uh-huh. a lot of stitches. And that's basically the stitches that go around your shoulders. Right. The whitest your, bit. The top of your arm. And then you knit up. You bind that off, and then you pick the stitches mm. up back so from the, for down the here. knitting up part. Is all the color work done on the up part? Yes, all, all the on the the yoke. That's the word I was looking for. And I guess so. Th- I guess this would be considered considered like a combo type of construction. How so? Where I've I've never seen it done before anywhere else, and then until I looked. On Ravelry, and I saw a whole bunch of other sweaters that were done like this. So I think a lot of her sweaters are uh, she does like this. So I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about it because I mean I can't really try it on this way. I mean I guess I can after I finish just, the yoke. Just, <laughs> just wear it around but your at, at this shoulders. point I can't. <laughs> I can't, especially since I think the the needles I'm using, the circular needles I'm using, is a little bit on the short side. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And so it's all like crowded onto onto this circle. So, you know, so what so colors are you going to be using? So I've got the the bright pink, a light blue, an off white, and a purple. Mm, very girly. And yeah, it is. I like it. Mm. And it's for me again. Another sweater for me. And what kind of like? What's the yarn? Feel like? I can't remember what the Martin um, Labs was. It feels very smooth. I also have some Quince and Co. in here and some Swan's Island. And I can't remember what the purple is, but I'll uh, I'll put it in the notes. Mm-hmm. The purple is nice too. Though they're all they're all hand dyed. Oh except for fancy. the they're not all hand dyed. I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> two of them are hand dyed and two of them are not. Oh, so your swatch, <laughs> those are the actual colors you're using? Yeah, these oh, are the okay. colors. The bright the purple is very purple. Yes, it is. It's very perfect. But I guess there won't be that so, many yeah, of that. Cause... No, that'll just be up here in the yoke, and then um, the pink will carry down to the body of the sweater. Uh-huh. Right. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? That's the only thing I have going on right now other than my purse socks. That lives in my purse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big project, though. Yeah, it's pretty big. What about you? I don't have any new whips. Uh, I'm still working on the Off Your Rocker Shawl, which is by... Rosina, I'm on the last of, no, I'm almost done with my third ball out of six, so it's just about halfway, and so I I was afraid that I would have to buy some more yarn, but I I did some test wrap around my neck, and I looked at it, and Sam looked at it, and he's like, I think it's going to be long enough, so I don't think I need to buy any more yarn, depending, I guess if it just ended in a really tragic spot, I don't know, but... Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, so this hopefully. is the one that it's it's originally was a triangle shawl. You're making it more of a stole. Yeah. A rectangle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also sort of thought, I don't know. I'm, I just I have too many scarves, and mm-hmm. I thought maybe depending if I can bear to part with it, I might donate it to like a. I was looking. I don't know if I already said I was looking online for charities to, you know, donate handmade stuff. And obviously you got the usual stuff for winter hats and gloves and stuff or stuff mm-hmm. for babies um, and things like that. Whereas something like a big shawl or stole doesn't really fit into the normal charities. But there was one website, which I don't remember what it was called, but it was an organization or I don't even know if it's an organization really or a group started by, you know, or just a woman, I don't know, in the UK, and she'll, she collects stuff that people have made and distributes it to different charities, so she had, like, mm-hmm. a nice list of 
the different sorts of charities that and what sorts of items they're looking for. And one of the things, uh, the types of organizations that might be looking for shawls were organizations that work with elderly people, which makes sense. Mm, okay. So Yeah, that does make sense. So yeah, so depending on how I feel about it when I'm finished, I might think about donating it just because I don't need more, more stuff. And it's, I like the colors, but they're not my most favoritest, which is probably why I feel like I might be okay to give it away when I'm done. Mm-hmm. Or you can gift, this, gift it to somebody. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then I'm also still working on the French market bag by Two of Wands. And I wasn't that far along when we spoke about it last time. And now I'm nearly done. It looks wow, like a bag. it's huge. Uh, yeah, it's it does. pretty big. I don't know what size yarn it calls for normally. Um, and I don't know that this yarn even has any sort of indication of the weight on the actual yarn because it's just craft cotton. Um, mm-hmm. So the actual construction of the bag is a bit funny. You do... It is very sack-like. And I think a lot of... It looks almost like a hobo bag. Yeah. So a lot of other um, of these sort of market bags, I think, expand from the middle, Mm -hmm. like in a circle. Mm, Yeah, okay. Whereas this one, you did the mesh stitch as a big rectangle. And then the way you sort of do your decreases to cinch it in creates this sack-like shape so even though Mm -hmm. the space between the straps isn't that wide the actual opening of the bag is pretty big yeah i can see Um, that it looks like a hammock when you open it yeah it looks like a hammock so obviously i've not finished doing my decreases and i've i might need to do more decreases than what the patterns call for because i think it's not closing up enough for me oh decreases along the the edge yeah so if it was a hammock but along the long edge you do decreases uh-huh. to sort of cinch it up i don't know mm-hmm. like just make this opening smaller to bring it up mm-hmm. um so i have to adjust the pattern a little bit but yeah it's it, it, it uses a lot of yarn though i think mm, I have to go on to the third ball of yarn that I bought. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, those are my two whips. That's cute. So, do you have any FOs? I just have one. It's a little one. I made another headband from Mm -hmm. my own pattern, the Millennial Pink Headband. And I just Mm -hmm. made it with yarn that I got from John Lewis sale a while ago. It's... The Rowan brushed fleece made with extra fine merino wool and baby alpaca. So it's very fluffy uh, Mm -hmm. and it's very soft. So it's just sort of like royal blue. Mm -hmm. I did my pattern a little narrower. um, But the reason I made it again is to celebrate the fact that because I was bored one day, I wrote up my pattern um, all nice and formatted as a PDF. So now uh-huh. when you go onto Ravelry, you can download it as a PDF. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Good job. In both US <laughs> and UK terms, even though it's basically super duper simple. There's, there's uh-huh. pretty much no point in doing it, but I figured, you know, if there were maybe other patterns in the future I wanted to publish, it's just gave me sort of practice or a base template to follow uh-huh. for future. And because I like to do that sort of thing, sort of graphic design. Yes, you do. Layout design. <laughs> 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 so, so um do, do, do they keep your ears nice and toasty mm-hmm. yeah um I, I actually think i like the thinner version because it i mean it's it's smaller Na- it's narrow narrower yeah um plus it doesn't use as much yarn so i feel like i could get four out of the two balls that i've got maybe even five hmm. i don't know why i'd want that many but <laughs> <laughs> You know, when your guests forget to bring <laughs> um, warm weather or, or cold weather clothes, yeah. you just keep them in your drawers. But yeah, that's, that's the only whip I had. Or FO. Sorry, yeah, that's the only FO I have. 
I have I have a bunch. <laughs> All your different chair well, socks count as one. <laughs> Is that your bunch? They... <laughs> You're gonna tell me well, you have yeah. I did the chair FOs. socks. I didn't. I, I didn't bring them up, um, but oh. I made chair socks for this the 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 kitchen chairs because you know your dad likes to stick those sticky felt thingies on, and then after a while they start wearing away, and then and then you're just pushing the the chair around on the sticky part because uh-huh. it's all that's left, uh-huh. and so it just makes a mess. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna make some chair socks. So I experimented with the blue one, and then I made a bunch of uh, the gray one. So I have, I made chair socks enough for four chairs, three chairs. Sorry. Yeah. And I have three more chairs to go. So those are done. <laughs> so you and say chair socks, fi- is it, is, are there like patterns for chair socks on Ravelry? I've seen them. Like there was one where it looked like the, the paw of a cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some that actually look like socks where they look, they're striped and stuff. So, I mean, I just had some, some, um, it's actually hand spun yarn that I got a long time ago. It's like, but it's really rustic mm-hmm. and I only had one ball of it. And it's like, I'm not going to, I only have enough for, for maybe a hat, but I'm not going to want to make it into a hat because it's really scratchy. Mm. So um, I'm like, oh, it's perfect. I can just make it. Into chair socks. Chair socks. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the cats like playing with them too. Before they get onto the chair. Put on the chair. Because I had them like lined up and they were like. <laughs> playing hockey with them and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I finished my almost magic socks. Yay. Yay. They look so you know how you were worried about how the leopard print wasn't gonna turn out right? It, uh-huh. it, I think it looks fine. Like it definitely looks It looks like leopard print. Yeah, I think it looks like leopard print. Oh, okay. I did the I did the um heels the two heels are a little different. <laughs> because you you are <laughs> incapable of making two socks the same way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, th- the first one it had you do a um, an afterthought heel, mm-hmm. where I mean, not the first one, the the the, the, pattern. the pattern. So when you get to where the heel is, you use um, scrap yarn and you knit half of the yarn with half of the diameter of the sock in scrap yarn, and then and then you continue with your regular yarn, your, your sock yarn. So then you would have like this yellow, just one, one row of yellow or whatever color. Mm-hmm. And then when you're done with your tube and your heels and everything, you pick that out and then you do this afterthought heel. And they didn't really give it any instructions on how to do an afterthought heel or mm-hmm. how, how to do a, you know, so it just assumes that you, you know how to do just, it's like just pick your favorite heel. I'm like, well, I've never done a heel like that before. So I had to look around and, <laughs> and I just found it too fussy. I just, I didn't like doing it, like having to pick the stitches out and everything. So I just, um, when I got to the second sock, I just, with the heel yarn, the, the, you know, the heel, the heels are different colors. I just knit the heel and then I just continued with the rest so of the yarn. So when you say afterthought heel, do, do you literally like all that blue chunk you just not do that? You just leave a big hole and then you put it in later? I'm confused. Yeah. you. So it looks like a tube sock. So it would look like when I was knitting it, it would just look like this, like a tube. There's uh. no heel. And over here would, would be that scrap yarn so, holding it together. So do you have to like cut then, out the scrap yarn? Yeah. Or you just pull it out. It's not, it's not woven in or anything. It's loose. So you pull out. So, pull so when out you the say it looks like yarn. a tube, but there's not a hole. Not when the scrap yarn is in oh, there. Oh, okay. And then once you pull the scrap yarn out. Once you pull the scrap yarn out, there's a hole. Uh, and then I never then knew that's what that stitches. meant. Afterthought heel. Yeah, I don't know if that's considered a true afterthought heel because you actually use scrap yarn to do, to mark where you want the heel. Mm. I know some people just do tubes, and then later on they just snip the yarn. <laughs> Where they want the heel <laughs> to be, <laughs> and so I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't really uh-huh. do my heels that way. So, um, is it considered a, an afterthought heel when you put some forethought into it? Mm, yeah. What's the point of that? What's the point of an afterthought heel? Well, what's the point in putting the scrap, like planning where you're going to put the heel, but then not doing it when you get to it? 
if you're knitting for somebody, you don't know what their feet size are, and you do the tube, you do everything but the heel, and then once you get to that person, you can do the heel later. So, does that make that much of a difference in the size of the sock, though? Yeah, if somebody has a really How big... How you do the heel? Or, or, or people that like to use the sock machines, they crank, like, giant tubes, mm-hmm. and then they do afterthought heels later on, because, they, you know, they don't want to... But would they not have to do that snip method? Yeah, they and actually cut it. I, I think they would have yeah. to do the snip method. Mm. I don't know. I've never done a sock machine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my almost magic socks. Uh-huh. And they fit me. Nice. Oh, these are the socks that I wore during the tattoo. The one sock. I wore one sock to, and then and then the and other. Then half a sock. A half a sock. Yeah. As an ankle warmer. <laughs> so they've already been warm even, even before they were blocked. Literal ankle warmer because that's all. <laughs> it was only big enough to literally cover your actual <laughs> literal, just literally ankles. <laughs> well, they kept my ankle warm. <laughs> <laughs> and my... Big F.O. is my sock arms. Yay! I was practically done with it when we last talked about uh-huh. it, but I'm completely done this time. Nice. Very good. I'm very you happy. You have to actually get a picture of it on you. Can I Can I put it on the mannequin no, and put my head over the mannequin? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I'll have Madeline take a picture of me wearing my... Sock armor sweater in the 90 degree heat that we're having right now. We're inside. You got the air conditioning on. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Meanwhile, I'll here, make sure I, do that. I wear scarves outside and then at work, I have the heater on because it's for freezing. Oh, no. Well, we did. Get, there was one night when it went down to the 50s. And your dad wasn't home. It was just me and Madeline. So we had all the windows thrown <laughs> open and we had our comfy blankets and our long pajamas on. Just for that one night, mm-hmm. and then and then and then it got hot again. We don't have any mailbag, right? No, we don't have a mailbag. But I thought I I'd mention I got a message from Kay from the Beatty Sisters podcast, really out of the blue, and it happened to come right after you messaged about that really nice uh, iTunes review. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Kay messaged me with the. Uh, subject line pay it forward uh, she was messaging me because someone had sent her some fabric I am Ruth too on Ravelry sent her some fabric and she just thought that was so nice that someone had sent her some fabric and was thinking about her that she wanted to pay it forward so she asked her podcast listeners to submit I don't know I think it was just anybody that was had had inspired them in some way Mm -hmm. uh, to yeah, to, to to nominate someone basically, and then she was mm-hmm. going to make project bags out of the fabric that she received, and then send it to somebody that was nominated. And Bethany Crochets too nominated me, and she oh, how nice. she nominated me because she said that she that I inspired her to try making garments because as sort of I've ventured into garment making, and so she has too. And so I so I went and looked on her. Ravelry page, and I saw that she'd made the ruffle sleeve cardigan back in June. Although her the the little face that she chose was just the like straight line face, so I don't think she was super pleased with it. But <laughs> my response to that is just to keep trying <laughs> <laughs> because <Huh>. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. And we we already got the bag that that was sent K from, from K, and they are very. I left them downstairs. Sorry. But I will take a picture of them. They're very cute. One has chickens, chicks, chickens knitting, uh-huh. and another one has goats or more chickens. More chickens, but not knitting. Mm. And they're yeah. they're like that zipper pouch. They're very uh-huh. cute. Thank you, Kay. Yeah. So, kind of mailbag, but not ma- well. It was sort of mailbag for us, but not mailbag for the mailbag segment but if anyone else has something they'd like to send just uh email us at kcacy podcast at gmail.com and it doesn't just have to be to tell us how great we are it could be <laughs> to tell us about something about you yes that was very exciting when you sent me that the, <laughs> um the text yeah so it is now september yes which means the cal cal is over i feel like I've, i haven't been posting that much on instagram and stuff because We've just been really busy and just, I, I still haven't really gotten back into my routine even after you guys left. 
here mm-hmm. because I got, I'd guess. Well, you after had more that. guests after. Yeah, that. I had more guests after, and then I had a, like a couple of days to just sit down and, and feel like I could relax, and then suddenly it, it just went away because we've got more guests coming this weekend. Oh, you and know you do. I just I had a lot to catch up on, and so I'd only just caught up on things, and now I, I I'm feeling like I've got more to catch up on from the time when I was catching up on the stuff <laughs> when you guys were here. <laughs> so I, yeah. You're falling anyway, behind. All that to say, the Cal Cal is now over. Um, so thank you, everybody, everybody who participated and posted on Instagram and posted on the Ravelry thread. And we're going to draw some prizes. Yay. Yay. So we had 230 different items submitted. Oh, wow. It's a lot. Um, by 47 different people. Uh-huh. So lots of people were posted, had submitted lots of multiple different things. So... I know some people draw prizes based off of post number mm-hmm. in a thread. So the more you post or the more uh, thing items yeah, you submit, the, the, the greater chances chance. are. Okay. But I think I'm just going to do it by the people who participated because I had a busy summer and I feel like I'm going to sympathize with people who had busy summers. So somebody who submitted one thing has just as much chance to be picked as somebody who submitted no things for the big prize. Uh-huh. So we. But yeah, so that's, that's what I think I'll do. Um, so we're going to have one big prize, which I'll pick out of everybody, and then one prize out of the netters and one prize out of the crocheters. Sound good? Sounds good. So if I can get my random number thingy in between 1 and 47. Right. So... Our sorry, do 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 drum roll. So our first prize, which will be the knitter, the knitter prize, is Oki in Alaska. Yay! Yay. What's her name? So what? Um, well, that's her rivalry name. Is Oki in okay. Alaska? And what does Oki in Alaska get? Oki from Alaska has won from the fo- from Folly Cove. It's a pattern book by Julia Farwell Clay. I met her. She was really nice. And it's got some cute hats and cowls and there's even a dress in there. Lots of um, nice patterns. So you get this book. Yay. So congrats to you. So if you want to get in touch with us on Ravelry or on Instagram or on our email or whatever, uh, do that. And if we don't hear from our prize winners in the next week or something, we'll 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 chase you down because you're going to get your prize whether you like it or not. <laughs> and then our next prize is two crochet patterns of your choice or two patterns of your choice from... Zines and Roger, which, who's Rosina, um, who and she's kindly donated that to us because we donated a couple or one of your project bags mm-hmm. for her, her granny Cal, I think. So, the winner of those crochet patterns is Threads and Morsels. Oh, congratulations! Yay! So, yeah, if you just uh, message us, we'll get you your things. Um, actually, we might. Just have you, you know, we'll let Rosina know that you're due to be able to pick a couple patterns for yourself. And then before I do the big grand, well, actually, no, I'll do the big grand prize. That will be picked out of the crocheters and the knitters. So anybody, anybody, (laughs) and do you know who it is? Who is it? It's Wombat Knitter. So, (laughs) congrats, Walmart Knitter. And you were actually very impressive because I think you had the highest score out of all the knitters and you submitted the most amount of items out of everybody. 24 different items worth 49 different points, which included three shawls, three peamy hats, and 17 chemo hats, which uh, you had taken and donated to the radiation center wow so that's impressive so so many things and we were really impressed by all those hats that you that you made so 
why don't you let her know what her um her grand prize is just the- her grand prize is a skein of lorna's laces shepherd sock hand dyed yarn nice. and a matching bag that's made from scottish tartan from my shop a little measuring tape and some um soak samples that i got so the reason we were laughing was because because you had impressed us so much with not only doing the most amount of things, but then, you know, making all those Kima hats and giving it away. We were going to mention you as an honorable mention and just give you a few <laughs> little prizes just for that. But seeing as you've, as you've gotten the grand prize, we'll probably save those prizes for another giveaway. But yeah, I mean, this works out perfectly. <laughs> Oh, congratulations. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks everyone for joining in and adapting to the new point system. We'll have a think about it for next year. And maybe if I'm still in Edinburgh, change the timing of the cow cow a little bit just because August is so heckin' busy <laughs> for me. And do you know yes. what? I, I don't think I finished anything for the cow cow. I think the only thing I've. <laughs> No, no, that's really? not true. That's not true. It's not. It's not. I finished my cardigan, and I finished just the like the intarsia crochet thingy that I did for. Oh, okay. yeah, the, the yeah. yeah. So no, 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 not not the bird, not the bird. Oh, the, the the pencil case, pencil the, case, the coin, the coin, the coin purse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I finished the coin purse. That that Faye that her like um uh-huh oh what was the stialic bag collection so so yeah so the, i did have some points to go towards the the standings the which i didn't even mention the yes. the final standings what were the final scores the final standings so in a stunning turn of events the knitters won no they didn't no they didn't no they didn't <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even let that sit You're for very long. So I just couldn't, just couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't go through with it. So the knitters had 351 points and the crocheters had 442. So oh, wow. We weren't too far behind. Less than 100. Yeah. 99. Good job, knitters. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> yep, one day. Uh. <laughs> it's like how can we how can we jig the score table around so it doesn't seem suspicious but it actually makes the knitters win I don't know. <laughs> no. I don't know. well yeah i don't know what's t- i mean if you know 80 more or 50 more hats were made you guys could have tied us <laughs> mm-hmm. hey so d- did you have a count of how many crocheters and how many knitters we had uh, let's see. I have 33 crocheters, but there was some overlap. There were some, uh-huh. some people who submitted some stuff for both. both. So I had 33 crocheters and 24 knitters. Oh, okay. So a little bit less. Hmm. So you would expect that then? Yeah. 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 We definitely lean a little bit heavier on the crocheters. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was fun. What's our, our next cow, 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 craft along, cow, knit along. Uh, I don't know. Along. I kind of liked our, well, maybe something more to do with a theme or technique Mm -hmm. or something. We'll have to think about that. Yeah. We'll have to think about it, but we'll, we'll, we'll Mm -hmm. try to get a a winter along. Okay. Well, we had our, um, the color one. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. You have anything for Mommypedia? No, I don't. You have any bits and bobs? Nothing? No. But we haven't done a few of our favorite things in a while. Do you have anything for that? No, but you do. Yes, I do. I started listening to audiobooks again. I, I've kind of, because I listen to so many different podcasts and watch so many, um, my audiobooks kind of got pushed, pushed to the side. Pushed to the side. So, um, I just listened to this one. It's called The First 15 Lives of Harry, Harry August by Claire North. And it is, it's a sci-fi story. And it's about this, these 
these people that live their lives over and over. They live, they die, and then and then they're born again, but at the exact same moment. So they go back into time, and they oh. relive their same lives, except they can change it. Right. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, it was interesting. So it was it's good. kind of like... Uh, well, there's like, you know, a little bit of conspiracy and uh-huh. there's like, you know, it's so it was, it was cool. I really liked it. If, so if you're into time travel, tra- time traveling and mm. sci-fi that, that was, I mean, it's not super sci-fi. It's just the premise of, of it is definitely sci-fi. Mm-hmm. There was a similar book. I think it was Rachel Atkinson or something that, that was also like a person living their life over and over again. So it kind of reminded me of that book. So I'm really getting into my audiobooks. I am going to listen to the one that you you talked about the the friend one the 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 Italian one. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that one called the one that you didn't think I had really sold well. Yeah, <laughs> my beautiful. So I, I get to give that a go. Uh, maybe the next book. Mm-hmm. And um, if anybody has any other recommendations, let actually, us know. so I, I now that you've said that all, I have maybe not a favorite thing, but I don't know a recommendation to go into our, a few of our favorite things, and it's a podcast, and it's oh, called yeah? it's called Conversations with People Who Hate Me, and it's hosted by Dylan Marin, and basically he, I think so he he used to make a YouTube series. Uh, unboxing videos where he he would unbox instead of goods you know electronics makeup whatever he would un- uh-huh. unbox intangible ideas like the patriarchy and racism you know whatever stuff like that uh-huh. um, and so very very liberal very social justicey and obviously he got a lot of really negative comments on his videos and on other things that he did so he started this podcast where he invites somebody who has commented, left a hateful comment on one of his videos or something to come on his podcast and have a conversation with him. And uh-huh. it's it's really interesting. The first season, that's all it is. The second season, some of the conversations are between him and someone who's left a negative comment on his stuff. And some of the episodes, he's moderating a conversation between two other people in which that same thing has happened. And Mm -hmm. it's really interesting because, because, you know, from my perspective, I'm almost always going to sit on the side of the person who's had a hateful comment thrown at him, them, Mm -hmm. just because Mm -hmm. that's, you know, where I lean on the political scale of things. Mm -hmm. And he does such a good job of having a calm, and respectful conversation with somebody that he disagrees with on so many different levels and on such fundamental things. And it really isn't about him trying to change their mind. It is just a mm-hmm. conversation. And it drives, it kind of drives me absolutely nuts sometimes because, <laughs> because you just want to scream into your headphones, like, what is wrong with you? Like, why can't you <laughs> like understand? And I think it's, <laughs> it it's for those people who, read the comment section of articles and videos that they know they shouldn't read the comment sections of because they're just going to hate people, but you do it anyway. <laughs> Cause I do that. And so <laughs> I feel like this show is for people like me for that. Uh-huh. And but yeah, for it's really reason. interesting and I would recommend it. Oh, well I'll, I'll give it a listen. That sounds interesting. Um, but you mentioned you watched crazy rich Asians. Yeah. Uh, we watch, I know I haven't read the book. I'm, we, the book is downstairs. So, you know, I it's see my it. book. I know it's your book. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. <laughs> I had I had meant to read it over the summer, but I never got around to it because I start listening to the audiobooks now again. It was good. It was very. I mean, you know, it was funny. It was a good rom com. I mean, that's what it, it was is, a good rom com. But the, you know, the funny thing is, like, there I can't remember. The, the the trailers that they ran before the movie, I kept looking at Matt and was like, why are they showing these trailers before a rom-com? There were some really strange choices, but <laughs> that had nothing to do with the movie. But, you know, being being Asian and specifically Chinese, there was a lot of things that, that, that just, you know, rung very f- familiar 
to mm-hmm. to us mm-hmm. or to me. I mean, I mean, obviously, the Mandarin that was spoken, I can understand them without having mm-hmm. to read the subtitles. The subtitles, and but they were kind of going back and forth between Mandarin and Cantonese and stuff. So I wonder if that was on purpose or if if they didn't think about it. It's like, oh, most people won't know the difference. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So that was a question mark. But, you know, the the cast was superb. Everybody everybody did really well. And the girl who played the best friend, mm-hmm. Peek Lin or something like that, um, her name, the actress's name is Aquafina. She's a rapper. Mm, yeah. She was uh-huh. also in um, Ocean's 8. I think uh-huh. she stole the show. She was hysterical. Really? I was like rolling. I've, I've not seen it, so. It was, yeah, I won't tell you. But she, she was really, really funny. I really liked her. Uh-huh. And, you know, Rachel Chu, uh, she she was very good. And, of course, um, Henry Golding, just adorable. So just, just I'll just pause in case we have, because the reason I've not seen it is because, and the, I, I would have seen it by now if I could, but in the UK it doesn't come out until November. Yeah, that sucks. So th- potentially there's, you know, we've got British listeners who don't know what we're talking about because I don't, it would it wouldn't make as much of a splash here, I don't think, as it would back home. For one, it hasn't come out, but basically it's the first Hollywood movie to star an all Asian cast. An all Asian cast since the Joy Luck Club. Well in and the that 90s. wasn't even all Asian. They they did have um hmm. like there were spouses that weren't Asian. Mm, yeah, but that. I I feel but even even to that extent. Uh huh. For the most part. Like if, specifically, yeah, Hollywood. Yes, obviously, yeah. there's lots of movies that start all Asian all Asia. because they come out in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see it on the first weekend. It had been out for over a week when we saw it. And we saw it in the middle of the week. And Madeline and I went to our local movie theater. And it's just, there's usually never anybody there because we usually like to see the matinees because it's cheaper. And we go there <laughs> and there's nobody else in there. And we thought we were going to see the movie just the two of us together. And it was in one of the smaller theaters because mm-hmm. they have different yeah. sizes. And uh, But no, there's an, old, an older couple of ladies. They did come and sit, they sat. And I was just wondering, I don't know, as as a non-Asian person, I mean, how what their take on it would be versus uh-huh. watching it as an Asian American person, especially being Asian American, because mm. there are certain things, um, you know, like being called a banana, stuff, stuff like that, that, mm. you know, we, we know about and, and it's just things that we've lived through and a non-Asian person may or may not understand that. Mm. Yeah, but I feel like it's, it's more about compelling stories. And, and if you miss a couple little things, if it's a good movie, that doesn't matter. But on a sort of another note, I'd mentioned on Instagram that I was watching Kim's Convenience. Yeah, we started watching which that too. Is, <laughs> did you start watching it? So it's <laughs> it's a Canadian show, but it's on Netflix. Uh, and it's there's two seasons. They're short episodes, but it's about a Canadian-Korean family, immigrant parents sort of thing. And it's really, really cute. And I, I blew through the two seasons in three days. Uh-huh. And I recommended it to some people at work. And somebody today actually came up to me and was like, oh, you were the one that recommended Kim's Convenience. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, oh my gosh, I've watched so much of it already. It's really, really cute. So, you know, and she's white uh-huh. and Scottish. So pretty far removed from the Canadian, Korean, Korean, Canadian experience. Uh-huh. But she enjoyed it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, it was funny. We, I think we, we kind of found out about it at around the same time, but you start watching mm-hmm. it first. Uh-huh. And because we, Madeline and I put it in our, um, not wish list. list, our list. Yeah. And we, we, you know, we got around to watching it and it was really funny. How far have you gotten? Probably about nine or 10 episodes in the first season. Mm, so, like so that's like quarters, pretty much the full maybe. first yeah. season. Yeah. So not, not quite done yet. It's just so cute. <laughs> yes. All the, all the actors are, are really good. But the, the, the friend of the brother, Kim Ji, <laughs> at first I thought he was Latino. <laughs> <laughs> because he's darker or something and he's just seems very i don't know i don't know he just i couldn't tell that he was he was korean that he was supposed uh, to be korean i mean he is korean uh, so that uh-huh. was funny and emily i mean like mom like i don't know <laughs> uh, but yeah i was because I, I had had i texted you when i texted you about it but 
I just I don't know why the thing that stuck with me the the actors or particularly the actor who plays the dad you know he's got his fake Korean accent uh-huh. but whenever whenever they're try, they're asking their kids or whatever what are you talking about and they just say what are you talking what are you talking and I just I don't know like obviously yeah it just made me think of my grandparents <laughs> they pretty much say the same same, same way with what Chinese are you talking accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, even though they obviously, in real life, they don't have accents, mm-hmm. their Korean accents are, are, are still Korean accents. They're not, like, fake Asian accents. Like, a, mm. Yeah, I, I, was, I was actually reading an article. Uh, it was an interview with the actor who plays Dad, and he was saying how, you know, his acting life he's put on lots of different fake accents, like Asian accents for different mm-hmm. roles that he's had. But he always had this weird mental block with Korean accents, even though he's Korean. Mm-hmm. And he just couldn't do a passable Korean accent for the life of him. He talked about this one gig that he had taken and he got the job and he had done his audition with an American, uh, sorry, a Canadian, American, whatever, reg- his regular accent. Uh-huh. And he got the job. But then when it actually got to the day, the guy was just like, ooh, do a Korean accent or a- accent it, just to, you know, I don't know why but they wanted him to do a Korean accent and he couldn't do it so they had to give his lines to the co-pilot and the so co-pilot? He, said that he, he, he was playing a co-pilot oh I see, I see. At, yeah in that role anyway so they had to give the lines to somebody else basically because he couldn't do a Korean accent uh-huh. and so he was saying that when he'd read the script for this because it was a play before what well, oh. was written originally as a play uh-huh. so he'd and, and he he I think both he and she the mom and the dad were in the play uh-huh when he read the script it just spoke to him and Somewhere deep inside him, his father's voice came out. Oh, uh, yeah. So to him, he's he's playing it with his father's voice. And he he admits that, you know, it's not always consistent. It's not always perfect. Uh-huh. And there'll be times where he is having to temper it a bit to make it more understandable or whatever. And But to him, it's, it, he, you know, other people, mainly non-Asian people or white people, might find it uncomfortable that he's doing a fake accent. But for him, the fact that, it is so much a part of the character. Like the character yeah. is an immigrant and it's uh-huh. all about his immigrant story. He wouldn't uh-huh. be the same character if he didn't have an accent and him having an accent. There are, there, whilst there are some jokes or some funny moments to do with his accent, like uh-huh. when he pronounces something and it sounds like he's saying something he's not <laughs> for the most part, we're not laughing at because of, at the accent, you know, like, so we're just, we're, we're laughing I, at the situation, which, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. It it kind of drives me nuts when when you find like the the fake Asian accent is usually they talk really slow and they cut off the consonants in every word so that's like that fake generic like, um, Asian Mrs. accent. Mrs. Kim and um, Gilmore Girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she doesn't have an accent either. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so I mean, I actually lived in Korea uh, when I was young for almost two years so it, it, it all you're like oh yeah that's definitely a korean accent though so if they were but except for, you know they would probably use different words or speak a little slower but it's fine because it's 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 meant for an english speaking audience so it's fine yeah <laughs> but yeah so another recommendation of ours you're yes. getting all the recommendations <laughs> on this episode yeah two asian and one sci-fi and if you want another recommendation for asian things you should also watch to all the boys I've loved before, which is a Netflix movie. <laughs> oh, were you watching that at home? No, I, I watched it. It only came out like a couple of weeks ago, and I I watched it because because I can't watch Crazy Rich Asians, so I was just watching everything else that's got Asian Americans in it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> did you have any shop talk for us? Nothing specific. I am very busy sewing because you know I was out of the shop for so long and not doing anything. I haven't had any updates. So just um, look out for an update coming soon. That's it. Okay. Well, I can do my thingy then. Okay. So you can find our show notes on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. And you can follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram uh, handle is just KCACY podcast. My personal one is Allison here, and my mom's is upstate underscore viv. Yep, is that right? Yep. And also join our Ravelry group. Just search Keep Calm and Carry On podcast in the groups tab. And like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, 
blah 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 everything else on all the things <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for listening and remember to keep calm and carry on sorry I just got quiet because I was eating a chocolate chip and I didn't want to <laughs> make chewy noises into the microphone <laughs> Nice.